When we forget something, do our memories just fade away? No, something far more interesting happens. When we remember something, we have to access that memory. And the simple way of thinking about access is through cues. We can follow chains of cues to get to that memory again. So I think about my childhood and I think about playing soccer as a kid. And then I think about a special soccer ball I had. This is the road I go down to access my memory of the soccer ball. But there are lots of parts to my childhood. If I think about my childhood, I might think about a treehouse or reading books or petting my cat. The same cue can lead to many different memories. Memories in our long-term storage tend to stay there a very long time. The problem isn't so much that it's left the storage area, but we've just packed so much stuff in there that we can't find what we need. Psychologists have demonstrated this over many decades using word lists. You might see on your first word list a word pair, like dog, rock, and they want you to remember that. In a second word list, you might get a word pair like dog, building, and they want you to remember that. But now we have a problem because there are two target memories that are branching off of the same cue. It's harder to remember memories that compete for cues. Your memories are still there in your head, it's just the access that's the problem. But I have been talking about memories as if they are these abstract things. R really, they're more like these plans over here. Hopefully a little less sad. Memories grow and change, and your brain is the soil in which all that happens. New memories need neurons and chemicals and electrical signals to physically form and lodge themselves inside your brain. All that physical stuff just takes time. This leads us to another way that memories interfere with one another. Your memory is just starting to be consolidated when BAM! Another memory comes in and just mucks that whole physical process up. You probably know that drinking impairs your memory, but it can also help you remember. If you get drunk enough, you will forget things like who you texted and what you said. But did you know that drinking enhances your memory at the same time? Let's suppose you study for an hour. Then afterwards, you drink a lot. Oh, crap. Your memory for what you studied will actually be better with the drinking than without the drinking. The alcohol stopped your brain from forming new memories. At the same time, it protected those study session memories from interference. By the way, I'm not recommending this as a study strategy. Please, please don't get blackout drunk. It's, it's bad. This is going to sound strange, but your brain is trying to forget things all the time. That's because remembering and forgetting are linked. To remember what is important, you have to forget what isn't. Thinking of forgetting as interference and not disappearance really helps explain a lot of the common effects we see in learning. Why is cramming so bad for learning? Well, it comes down to the theories we talked about in this video. The first thing is you don't give time for new memories to be consolidated. And the second thing is you increase the competition for cues because you're studying in the same place and that serves as one of the cues for the target things that you're trying to learn. Why is studying in different locations good for learning? Well, one of the ideas is that you create multiple different cues for the same information, which makes it easier to access and reduces overall competition. What else is easy to access? This video over here. You do the, you click on the thing, you do the, you press it, press it down with your finger. You, you kind of hold it. Do you, have, do, you have a, do you have a mouse or a trackpad? No, okay. Well, either one, you, you, you just want to press the thing that does the, you know,